It's a Marge. I can have a nice Marge. I'm sorry. Jackson County Jail, uh, 
if you up here in what they call the Eastern District, you know, it don't just have to be Jackson County. It can be anywhere that's in the Eastern District area. Uh, this is where your case comes after they get through jacking you around, jacking you around and over there in that court. You know, uh, in St. Louis, they got a, another Missouri Court of Appeals that they call the Eastern District. This is the Western District and they both actually on the same level. And then once you get your case done in this building, it goes to the Missouri Supreme Court. Very few cases ever make it to the Supreme Court. So if you have a conviction in Jackson County and you don't get your issues resolved by these people in this building here, you are pretty much done because the Supreme Court only hears uh, a very few cases. They have to have some type of exception. But it's basically the same routine. Uh, once you go to trial and you get convicted, that you got a real heavy burden of trying to convince these gentlemen or anybody else that's in the judicial system to overturn your case because of the way that they have the judicial system set up. Now, it takes 12 people in Missouri to have a unanimous verdict to say that you're guilty. But they got and, and that might seem like that's kind of fair, but they got a lot of tricks they use when you go to trial that's designed to make sure that they pretty much know who's, how these people are gonna vote. You know, they, they put all the jurors from certain areas. You got certain areas in Kansas City that they pro-law enforcement. Pro-law enforcement means that if a police officer accuses you of committing a crime, we don't care if it's any evidence or any proof that you did it or not. If the prosecutor files charges on you and they think you're guilty, then we're gonna side with the prosecutor. We're gonna side with the police department. You know, because we don't think they lie on people. They trained a lie. They trained a lie. But it is now, this is the place where they put you on county house arrest. Uh, where they put the little ankle around your brace, uh, bracelet around your leg and, you know, you, it's, it's kind of like being in jail while you outside of jail. You know, you have to have your permission from your parole officer to go outside of your house. All you do is go to work, come back in, they give you a little time to go to the store and things. And this is really like about to become one of the major apparatuses of incarcerating people because slowly but surely they begin to realize, man, we can't afford to keep all these people locked up in these jails we got. So, yeah, we, we, I mean, if we got them on the street, we can make more money out of it. We can, you know, we, you have to have a job. Charge more. And so they can, you can, you know, they don't have to feed you. You have to feed yourself and all that type of stuff, but they can still make money off of it. So this is what they're going to be introducing in uh, the not too distant future. You know, put more people on house arrest and probably the only people that they're going to actually have incarcerated are people that they're going to say are too dangerous to be out in society. But right now, as it stands right now, everybody that they got locked up, it don't make no difference if it's a traffic ticket or whatever, they think you're too dangerous to be out of society. And they also have the all the county court records over, over here that when your case gets through being processed in the courts and all this, this is where your records go and they, if they have to come and get them, they come over here to get them and they take them wherever they need to go. But uh, when I look at this building, it reminds me of a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine named Sharon Snyder. She used to be a clerk over there in the court room. Uh, one of the courts over there. And it was this guy named Robert Nelson. He kept uh, telling these people, I'm innocent, and I didn't do this. He kept applying for uh, a DNA test. And every time he applied for it, he got denied on the technicality. And which my, uh, according to my understanding of the law, and I read cases that say this, that you don't have to file a plea in Missouri. It doesn't have to meet certain type of standards or specifications. If you can write a judge a letter, and I've done this, you can write a judge a letter. If the judge can read that letter and understand what you were saying, then he's supposed to take the appropriate action. But this judge, he put this man through all these changes telling him that his motion for a DNA testing was incorrect. So all my friend did, the work was a, it was a court clerk, she just told the sister where she could go to get the records. They fired this woman. It was all on the national news because they called that giving her legal advice. She, and and I, that was her job to tell people where they had to go to get the records and stuff. But as it turned out, 
The man got the DNA test because she gave him a motion that was filed by a lawyer where another guy got a DNA test and so they couldn't very well say that his motion wasn't drawn up right then because the same motion that he filed is one they had already previously granted. Anyway, this man gets a DNA test. He comes back and it shows that he's innocent. He actually didn't commit. He was in, supposed to be in jail for, for rape. He's, they took 26 years out, away from this man out of his life for something that he didn't commit. I'm sure everybody here tonight has heard everything that you probably want to hear and a whole lot more about this building. Uh, you know, we've it's been under investigation for corruption. You know, they've uh, been uh, raided by the FBI. They've had correctional officers uh, escorted out of the building. Women have been raped. Uh, people were being savagely beaten up for trying to call attention to uh, medical issues and things of this nature. Uh, this is the worst possible example that anybody could ever look to for running a jail. You got mold all on the uh, walls in the cells. You know, uh, the showers are filthy and nasty. The toilets got crude that has been built up on them. It looks like it's been there for years. Uh, I was in one, I was here, uh, not long ago and man I was so scared to sit down on the toilet I couldn't get no uh cleaning supplies and nothing they said no we don't do that here man I, I had to walk around and hold my stool for a couple of days man I said man I'm not sitting on that toilet you know that's how I, I, I it looked so horrible I thought it was something living alive in there it was gonna come up out of there and grab me but uh this is what it's like when you go in this place and ever since I've been living in Jackson County all I've ever heard is bad things about how they run their county jails, even when it was over there in the other building. You know, I, about, yeah, I think it was over there in that building. Uh, it's, you know, it's a nightmare. And I, this is one of the few places that came to the attention of the uh, people in Washington, and they were able to get some people down here to look into it. I don't know how much they was able to change. But uh, this is going on all over the United States. And I'm going to tell you something that I think a lot of people are not paying any attention to. This jail is ran by black people, Nigerians. And I think that's the reason why they were selected for the raid. Uh, because you got a, a lot of jails all over Missouri that's ran by white people. They're doing the same thing and they haven't raided those people. But I'm not trying to make a case for them because if they up there and they treating people like that, they deserve to be. Uh, raided and I hope some of them go to jail because they treated us like animals when we were up there uh, The curious thing about this new governor that we have He's appointed a task force and he claims that he wants to reduce the prison population now 
they, I think this building holds about 500 people. They want to shut it down. They say it's antique and they need a new building. Uh, but they want to build a building that's got even more sales in it to house more people. Now here's the curious thing about it. You don't have enough people right now to even staff this building. Uh, they have to deny prisoners certain services because they don't have enough staff members to run the building. If you don't have enough people to staff this building, it only holds 500 people. Tear it down. Why would you want to build another building that holds even more people and they want to put it way out there at the Bannister Complex where they got nuclear contamination in the soil what? and make it harder for people to even get there to be able to visit their relatives. They have a difficult enough time trying to get down here to see their relatives. The staff members are having a difficult time trying to get to work. But they want to put a uh, building way out there in, Ban on, on Bannister, uh, uh, in the Bannister area somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, now does that make sense to anybody? Because it, it, no. I, I, I've been trying to figure it out. It, it don't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I think we probably need to go around and see if we can holler at some of the other fellas that's waiting on us to stop by. We probably, we're going to have to go around this whole building and then we'll come back. All right.